I think I'm back. Uh, it's free scratch again. You know, earlier I was doing a little abo beating on a, a piece of obsidian, and it was really sort of a problematic piece of obsidian from the balance standpoint, everything like that. But I've been working on it while I was waiting for the phone to charge to work on that Cody type thing some more. And see, I still got real weird. Uh, exterior cortical area and cracks and stuff in it but it actually I was not working on this abo by the way I mean I was using copper but I'm getting it somewhat whipped into shape and it may actually be kind of interesting when it's through but anyway so I thought I'd show you that because I don't know if I'll show it through this is where I'm at on this thing um, hopefully you can see it the sun's starting to go down, so I can actually see the viewfinder now, or see the thing. But anyway, um, I've still got some issues on this. I mean, i still got some balance stuff and all that kind of stuff, but it's alright. It's all good in the hood. Fun to mess with, anyway. Although, I must say, I don't think this has been my best day in dealing with a camera. But oh well. I shouldn't show this on camera either where I just do this little edge beveling and raising kind of stuff like this. I ought to be more professional in how I do it. More meticulous guys will go through with a flaker and take off every little delta and, and then uh, after they've taken off every little delta, we'll then take a finer braider and barely skate on the thing and everything like that. But, I don't know, I still think I'm kind of into the, the wild side of it, kind of like, I still wonder how much the old boys actually sat around trying to do stuff perfectly sometimes. Maybe there were some of them that did, meticulous ones, but I like to think they were busier trying to get food and stuff, maybe not. What to do, what to do. I've got this thing to, uh, to lanceolate shaped. I need it more parallel sided, really, if I'm gonna have this kind of flaking on it, I think. Although, I don't know, you know, I, I told y'all I was doing a certain kind of flaking, but doesn't mean I really gotta do it. I mean, it's not like we had a contract or anything. I don't know whether to recommend this or not, but I, uh, a while back I discovered that if I push in on my flaker tip and then rotate my wrist counterclockwise, it causes the flakes to detach without waiting you know, for the pressure to build so high that it detaches. And of course there's an obvious advantage there that I can make it detach whenever I want it to that way. But I don't know if I should say that or not. Okay, let me show you a little issue here. I'm coming along here and I'm lowering it pretty good. Well, this is kind of a raised area that for balance purposes, it would be nice if I did some thinning here. And I've got a little step in there that I would like to take out. I think I was waiting to take that out and told y'all about that. No, that's on the back here. Anyway, um, <coughs> can you see that? Right in here. So anyway, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to the other end of my issue stick because it's sharper. And when it's sharper, I can take longer flakes with it and do a better job of thinning that. You might say, well, if you use the sharper end, the flakes aren't going to be as wide. Well, that's not true because it depends on where I push because I can space it out a little bit more and get a similar looking flake, even though I'm not using the thicker 
the thicker copper in to do it. You can actually sometimes, you know, get a pretty a pretty large looking flake with a pretty small point and I did this I took you know those little hinges off and that kind of stuff but see how wide that flake those flakes look um, I was taken with it with a sharp point but they look wide because I was spacing them out better more or more there is no better it's just more anyway Sounds like Ramble Thursday. Um, but I don't know, uh, the flakes were running, you know, two thirds or whatever. And another thing you can do sometimes, which I'm gonna do, it is actually still a tiny bit raised right in there. And nobody but me and y'all, and y'all aren't gonna tell on me, will know if I come back and do a couple more flakes right in that same area. Well, that was too big. But I run the next one by it, and it makes it look smaller. So I end up running three instead of two. Well, one of them, that one was kind of a big flake, but nonetheless, it actually, I don't know if you can see that, but it looks pretty good, really, in there where I just ran a couple extra flakes. And like I say, you know, I'm not, I can't be forced into confessing that, so. Go me. Sorry if I just jiggled the camera. The camera is sitting on tripod legs. Okay, so what do I want to do now? Somebody was uh, saying something in a message to me about how, or was saying something about how fast they Oh, was, I know who it was. It was T Man. It was. Uh, Terry on Paleo Planet 1442. I like Terry. Terry's a pretty good napper. I think he's better than he realizes. Um, says he, he flakes too fast, and I think it's because he flakes at night after he's been working a lot and he's in a rush. But uh, it pays sometimes to stop and look at the big picture. See the forest and the trees. You know, I told you I was going to get that. Um, I told you I was going to get that little hinge from the other side, but I decided to cut cut one corner off of it and just reduce it a little bit on this side because I saw that I probably could if I if I put enough force into it that it probably would would work fine. I'm actually going the wrong way. Meh. I don't know what I'm doing actually. All I can tell you is this is uh, not going to be a Scotty. It's going to be a, it's going to be an agate basin. In a hundred years from now, the, the Archies that find it are not going to realize that it was supposed to have been something else. with the napper just couldn't make what he wanted to make because he was videoing they won't know that and they'll probably argue with each other over the napper's intentions
and what culture the napper was from and stuff. I personally know the napper and I don't think he's going to care at that particular point in time. Then again, he may be somewhere giggling about it. Dang, I just hit the camera again. Hey, the sun came out. The sun will come out tomorrow. Look at my little point, but now I can't see the viewfinder. There'll be sun. You know you'd buy that. First bid, first bid. No, just kidding. I've never sold a point. I don't really ever intend to. People say, well, what do you do with them? I put them, I put them in baskets or Tupperware. Wait a minute, I can't, I'm not gonna say that on camera. I don't endorse any particular company's products unless they're napping companies. Yeah, it's definitely Ramble Thursday. You know, this isn't nearly as bad as it could have been considering that I'm on camera. But I still need to, yeah, I need to do that. I ought to try and put this thing on leather and run a big old overshot flake or something just to show I can, but it'd mess up everything. Not that everything's not messed up already. How much time have I been? Oh gosh, I'm almost 12 minutes. Gosh. All right, fine. Well, yes, I do know that I'm not going from the base. But I just told y'all to do that because I just am careful which direction I flake and I can send them straight in either way. Or for that matter, I can probably do them oblique either way. I'm versatile. And full of what? Yes, indeedy. I'm putting no pressure at all on my wrist, by the way. I don't know if you can tell, but I, I'm, I like... It's a sideways thing. I'm, it's like I'm slapping a hockey stick or something here. I scoop. Okay, now... I would like for that flake to run. What if I try to do it on leather and I'll either look like a genius or a goofball when it works or fails? Maybe I'll do that. Oops, just lost my abrader. Okay, so the other thing though, it's like I told you, when you're gonna, if you've got a little chewed up tip, you're gonna do an important flake, try and get it straight. Okay, where's that leather? There it is. I like to get it really, I gotta get my leather really smooth here. I actually need new pieces of leather. I don't redo stuff often enough. There's my flaker. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Okay, what time is it? Eh, I got time. There's a little hinge there. Uh, this hump is, uh, you know, try, trying to get a flake over that hump isn't a sure thing. I probably could do this fine with the other thing, but, <clears throat> I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to try and make it run because it's leather. And if you notice, what it does is, it, it the, the if you do it wrong, it'll step out right where the leather touches it, but it ran past the center line and it came all the way over to here. So it did take that hinge out and that's real easy to remove from this other side. And it lowered it too. See, it, it went a little under more because of it. So it, it flattened that to kind of match the other. So what I'm saying is, yes, it did work. And yes, I'm special. Uh, let's see, what? It's 1442. Okay, I'm stopping, but I will be back.